What happens when you switch the roles of police officers and civilians? Well, today we're gonna find out on this episode of Switch. Let's go. Hey, buddy, can I do uh, a, a back of my car, please? Hey, my man, stop real quick, my man. Have you guys ever wondered why police officers do what they do? Or what about the police officer that's just speaking over you and not allowing you to talk as a civilian? Well, want to know more because what we're going to do today is we're going to put real civilians in the shoes of a police officer. We're going to allow them to experience what it's like to be a police officer day in and day out. Today on Switch, we're here in Corona, California, where we're going to throw civilians in the shoes of police officers. We're going to walk them through what use of force is like, what tools they have at their availability. But at the end of the day, we're going to put them in the shoes and allow them to make the real life decisions that are being made every single day. So stick around as you guys watch this episode of Switch. What we want to do is we want to kind of go over some of the use of force protocols that we utilize in law enforcement or an officer uses anytime they use force. And so today we're going to be utilizing simunition rounds. Trevor, go ahead and explain to us what a simunition round is and what we're going to be using out here in the scenarios. Yeah, a simunition round is kind of an overriding term for a paint projectile uh, out of a firearm used for training. And these are UTM rounds, ultimate training munitions. And basically what it does is it uh, projects a cartridge uh, at a distance that's filled with paint. So when you get hit, you feel the impact, you hear the gun being fired at you, and then you can see exactly where you're hit. Uh, they are quite painful, so you do have to wear some protective gear. They can break skin. They can put your eye out uh, and do injury if, worry, you're, if, you're, <laughs> if you're unprotected. But that's the whole learning part of it, because if there's no penalty, there's no pain penalty for what you're doing, you know, you're not gonna get the training value out of it. So there has to be a little bit of that hesitation, like I don't wanna get hit by this. Today, the great thing about it is we know that every single one of us is gonna walk out of here today safe. So we know that we're gonna make sure everybody's safe. But there is, like to Trevor's point, there is a little bit of a level of stress because you know you got something coming out to you. So we got a few people out here, uh, Trevor, Miles, and then Sed is on his way. So we also have some police officers out here. The show is called Switch for a reason. So we're gonna switch, you know, you guys, he's gonna be the, the, the person that you guys are talking to. You guys are finally gonna be the officers, okay? So this is what we're gonna do today. So you are just pulled this vehicle over for a vehicle code violation. Okay. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna walk up and contact Mr. Martin at the front driver's side door, okay? okay. He's gonna be sitting down. We're gonna say you got expired registration, ask him for his driver's license, insurance, whatever you need, have dialogue with him, all right? So the key things to remember, obviously you got your radio if you need to call for backup. You have a taser right here. If you need to use a taser, pull your taser right out of him, say taser, taser. Okay. And then he'll know to simulate either being to a successful taser deployment or not. You have a baton here, so you can pull that baton out. You can use force. You can use that baton physically against him. Okay. It's soft, so it's not going to hurt him. And you also have your firearm. Hey, how you doing there, sir? What's up, officer? Hey, uh, how you feeling today? I'm, I'm doing fine. What, what, what's going on, man? Uh, the reason why I pulled you over, sir, because you had expired tags. Man, my tags are not expired. Okay. Uh, I just paid them last week, boss. Well, sir, you don't have the current tags. What on your year? Vehicle. What year is on there? Uh, you have 2000. 2021 on there. Sir, you have 2019. Mm -hmm. Man, I took care of that though. Okay, but sir, can I get your driver's license and registration, please? Man, you know what? I don't know where. You know, I was at a rush and I was leaving the house, man. And I, you know, I was just trying to go to the store and get something for my wife. You know, my daughter's not feeling sure. Like that, so. Okay. You know, I don't know where my. Okay, is. sir. Uh, if you don't mind, can I just have you keep your hands on the steering wheel, please? Wait, didn't you just ask for my driver's license? I, you're, you're right. I did, sir. I apologize. You want my boss? Do you want my driver's license? How about this, sir? Can you just give me your name? I'm gonna get you my license. Okay. Because now I'm, I'm, I'm feeling a certain kind of way. Do you want me okay. to keep my hands here, or do you want me to get? Sir, go ahead and get your driver's license for me, please. So you said you were going to the store? Yeah, man. You know, you guys get it. You, you, you kind of stop people for no reason and stuff, uh -huh. and then you get us a little nervous. Okay. And, I'm sorry, sir. I, well, it's you know, okay. I, it, I got it somewhere in here. I okay. just don't know. Oh, oh, officer hit. Officer hit. Officer hit. Oh. 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 Oh, you good, bro? You good, you baby? <laughs> All right. How you feel, bro? Brother, I'm I'm gone. I'm in heaven right now. <laughs> you know what? And sadly, as funny as it may sound, but sadly, bro, that is a reality for some police officers. 
Let me ask, is there anything else that you could have done that you think you could have did better on that? You know what, I thought I, uh, I don't think there's anything I could have did different. I mean, I thought I had a good view on his hands um, and I didn't really, I just wasn't expecting him to pull out like that. I wasn't expecting that at all. Okay. And I mean, like just thinking about it, like he was in the glove compartment, but then he had all the papers. So then the papers was like a distraction. And so the, the firearm I think was on the side. So I'm thinking he's grabbing for the paper, but then as soon as he turned, I thought he was gonna hand me the driver's license, but he handed me something else. Did you did you ever see the gun? No, I didn't see the gun. It was too late. And then the thing that bothered me the most is how I fell down. And so he got out the vehicle and then that was a that was a kill shot right there. So I'm glad you brought that up because that's one of the things when we talk about to officers, we're training officers, there's this phrase that we call stay in the fight. Because at that moment in time, when you're on the ground, you're now fighting for your life. And there is, you can't just lay there and just kill right. over. Right. Because sometimes these suspects, they don't care. They are, they are trying to bring the fight to you. So at that moment in time, when we talk about being prepared and always having a plan in the back of your head to respond, it's for moments like that, that cause you to get up, look around in your surroundings and get back in the fight. There's so many different aspects of a vehicle stop that people don't realize. What happens if there's four people in the car? So here's the big reveal. The big reveal is this. This scenario actually happened in Las Vegas. A state or uh, an officer, a uh, Vegas Metro officer was doing a stop on somebody. He was actually talking to a guy in a lifted truck and the, the suspect, just like said did, was distracting him, looking around, looking, yeah. reaching for yeah. stuff, fumbling. Yeah. And he pulled a gun out just at that officer and flipped it just like he did in this scenario. And he shot the officer in his lung. Now, gratefully, they were able to drive that officer to a local hospital and save his life. But that, ha that actually happened in Vegas happens instantaneously so what am i supposed to do in this scenario so he's not presenting the driver's license so what am i supposed to do you have to investigate and figure out why you want to control him as much as you can so the moment i would recognize somebody's kind of stalling at that moment in time i'm going to say you do me a favor keep your hands on the steering wheel at all times and then i'm going to get their number just tell me or get their name tell me your name tell me your date of birth but keep your hands on that steering wheel because now i can go figure you it did out that initially. you did remember yeah. you asked my name and then i go look do you either want my name or my driver's license exactly right right, right, right <laughs> exactly right, right so now when you realize somebody's acting suspicious you want to be able to control it verbally as much as you can letting them know don't make any sudden movements because the moment you start making sudden movements that tells me now that you're trying to do something else this episode of The Switch would not be possible without our sponsors. I want to thank SC Village for allowing us to utilize their facility, but most importantly, I also want to thank 88 Tactical for sending out all the equipment that we were actually able to use during these scenarios. Thanks again, guys.